Wait, remember Iron Man Armored Adventures? It's an interesting series that was released on the Nicktoons network back in April of 2009 that focused on a younger Tony Stark who becomes Iron Man at an age where he is still a teenager with teenage responsibilities. Because of the popularity Iron Man was receiving thanks to the 2008 live action film that was setting up the building blocks of the MCU, there was a large interest in Iron Man media, so it only makes sense that a cartoon would continue to build upon that. It opted for a CG animated look and wanted to capture a lot of what makes Tony Stark the character he is, just aged down to set it apart from what else is out there. I remember having a lot of fun with the show when it was on the air after how much I loved the first Iron Man movie. Being able to jump from the movie to the show to then the second movie, then back to the show, and then the Avengers movie came out. While the MCU had other components going on for that buildup, the way that Iron Man went from a character I didn't know too much about aside from the basics to one of the most exciting was genuinely a really fun time in history. So today, let's take a look at Iron Man Armored Adventures, see what it was all about and what happened to it. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand wait 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 uh uh ah double fringe miss oh you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year look at you you look silly but i'm here to fix that because i'm gonna give you not only 25 videos but i'm giving you 50 videos i have two channels that's two fringe misses each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days i haven't slept in months enjoy the content or don't now, there are some major differences and liberties taken here to make the series stand on its own, but still feeling like a show that can do justice to Iron Man and the surrounding characters in his life. Like, for example, when it comes to Tony Stark's origin story for his life and becoming Iron Man, which makes sense as he is now a teenager, and around him in his life at this age are both Pepper Potts and, of course, his right-hand man, James Rhodes, a.k.a. Rhodey. Tony's parental life is a bit different, too, with his mother already having passed away from when Tony was younger, and since then, Tony has been removed from from a regular school system being safeguarded by his father, Howard, to be a part of Stark International, working on new technologies and inventions. One of those inventions would come out to be a flying suit of armor, something that he believes would make his father proud and overall just impressed. Howard originally made the decision to no longer have the company work on making weapons the day Tony was born, which didn't sit well with Obadiah Stane, another character that works with Howard that ultimately sabotages a plane that both Howard and Tony were on, as it explodes, seemingly killing Howard with Tony only surviving thanks to his suit of armor, as the crash left him in bad shape, making it through by having the suit navigate him to the Rhodes residence, as he now survives on with the arc reactor now a part of him in his chest. The first episode really establishes this in a pretty great way, cutting forward six months to now Tony being back in a regular school setting, as it cuts back to parts of his survival getting him out of the deadly situation he was in. This gets interrupted by the introduction of Pepper Potts and where Tony sparks his friendship with her, as she knows all about him because her father is an FBI agent looking into the mysterious supposed death of Howard Stark in connection to Obadiah Stane, to which he is the new acting CEO of Stark Industries. From here, after life has gone on since the incident, Tony shows Rhodey what he's been working on, a fully finished version of the suit of armor. Initially wanting to use the suit in the pursuit of figuring out the truth about Obadiah and bringing him to justice, but little did he know that he would find himself serving up a different kind of justice, as he helps stop a runaway train, in the most amateur fashion of course, but becoming a superhero getting dubbed Iron Man. Iron Man Armored Adventures is coming up next on Nicktoons. Through this, Tony sees the larger picture here, something that his father would be proud of and would want to see the good his son's inventions could bring for the world. While he still will seek out the truth and save his father's and, well, his family's company from the more dastardly shady business that Obadiah wants to have it become, he will also be the hero that is needed for the people. It's a genuinely fun setup and the characters themselves are all pretty great, and I love the connection Howard and Tony have in the opening. You can see how much Howard has put forth an effort to not just focus on his business, but have a genuine focus on his son. It's all really sweet and makes the mystery around his father's alleged death and the reason why Tony becomes Iron Man so much more impactful. The show has a good focus on some pretty cool villains making appearances that Tony has to deal with in mostly new ways, with a bunch of big arcs included into the whole thing, like a Mandarin storyline that's very entertaining to watch unfold thanks to the introduction of the character Gene Khan, a person that Tony befriends but has ulterior motives in wanting to use Tony that will lead him to finding the rest of these special and magical rings because 
because surprise, he's actually the last remaining descendant of the original Mandarin, and now in the show is the current Mandarin. But through his time with Tony and the others, we get to see a conflicted character as they spend time tracking down the rings with Iron Man passing the worthiness tests to acquire them as the Mandarin starts to doubt himself. We see him actually be heroic in some cases and become a real help in extreme tough situations, leading him to pass a test in the efforts of saving the world, but with his plot for the rings being tangled up in the explanation of what really happened to Howard Stark, his story shifts focus back to what it originally was once he clashes heavily with Tony and sets off to continue his journey to be the definitive Mandarin. All this does is lead him back to needing the aid of Tony, only stopping the confrontation ensuing by the promise of revealing to Tony the truth about his father if Tony helps him. All this part ramps up to the tie-in of the big bad Doctor Doom, bringing both Iron Man and the Mandarin to work together as allies for real and face the ultimate threat that is Doctor Doom. It does continue on to go further, as the Ten Rings and the power they hold are always Jean's goal. Despite all of his humanity and needing help from the others and having shown compassion before, bringing forth a full-on alien plot after acquiring the tenth and final ring. But maybe through this power and the origins of the rings themselves, he might just learn that he wasn't meant to be a powerful ruler, but possibly a force for good to protect the world. His internal conflicts made him such a more human character. It was really a fun take on the Mandarin and his connections to the overall plots of major moments in the series and to Tony's direct life were all done so well and it all made sense. This double fringe miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. Hey. Hey, you heard of Gamer Subs? Yeah. Did you know it's less than one calorie per serving? Yeah. Did you know that it's sugar free? Yeah. Did you know if you use code Fringe, you get 10% off your order? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Just go to Gamer Subs, use code Fringe, get 10% off. Sick. Are you going to go to Gamer Subs and use code Fringe for 10% off? Yeah. You know it helps support the channel, right? Yeah. Do you know that you're really cute? Huh? Obviously, this is Tony Stark, or Iron Man's story here at the end of the day, and there is a lot more to the show than him dealing with the Mandarin. He's very much Tony Stark in every way. He's smarter than everyone around him, and he knows this. He can come off extremely cocky and overconfident in most situations, but he always has heart. It might be an arc reactor, but he still has it, taking on any challenge no matter how tough that gets in his way. He's starts off the show still being reserved and only relying on himself. Yes, he has Rhodey as his best friend and starts becoming really close to Pepper as she joins the adventure here, but he tries keeping them at bay as much as possible and away from the danger, which in turn brings conflict to the group as they want to be able to help in a more meaningful way as well. With a lot of the pressure he has now at such a young age, it does get to him. Whether it's his trust getting messed with from those who wish to deceive him, or him releasing his stress in the form of anger coming off as a jerk to those he cares about. His best friend Rhodey basically takes on the role of the man in the chair at first, helping Tony operate the systems of the suit remotely when needed and assisting him through knowing everything about the suit there is to know, how it functions inside and out. Eventually, as other plots involve the destruction of other replicant armor being produced, Rhodey knows that Tony is in trouble at one point in dealing with the Mandarin and Ring Hunt, leading him to find the armor for the War Machine suit, stepping inside of it and going to help Tony. From there, Tony learns more about what it means to be a team and works with Rhodey as a team of two iron-suited heroes that take on the problems together. Pepper herself eventually finds out the truth as to who Iron Man is after Iron Man saves her from Whiplash, and officially ends up joining in with Tony and Rhodey in a real way, getting herself tangled further in a lot of the situations they get into. Once Rhodey becomes the war machine and is directly in the field as well, Pepper takes over his old position of watching over them from a separate location, but through this she starts getting the itch of wanting her own suit as well, wanting to be as dynamic in the field as they are, and at one point in order to really help out and save Tony's life, she gets into the stealth armor suit that had been built holding her own in a fight, but the suit ends up getting destroyed as a result of it. Tony, however, who has warmed up more to the power of teaming up with others instead of being a lone wolf of one, was impressed with how she handled herself in actual combat with the suit, knowing what her real desires are and eventually gifts her with a new stealth armor suit to start taking out for a spin, as the situations are more deadly and difficult than ever. Later on, she gets gifted from Tony another new suit, and through having to come in and help save Tony and Rhodes, she adopts the name of Rescue for herself, as it just has this certain ring to it. These three may have always been Team Iron Man, but now they truly are, fighting together to save the world from extreme threats as a different shield of armor around the world to protect it. Pepper's relationship with Tony evolves throughout the series as well, feeling a lot more reserved as it slowly builds up through little notions of both of them having some sort of feelings for each other, and where it gets to in the series by the end is really wholesome and felt much more impactful based on where the focus of the characters had to be with all the conflicts they had to face. Iron Man Armored Adventures is coming up next on Nicktoons.
Something pretty cool about the series is that it feels like it is part of a larger world than just Iron Man's story, but also not feeling like it's trying to be like the MCU and build out these other focus points when bringing in other heroes and villains from the world of Marvel. Sometimes they are integral to certain moments of the show, and sometimes they are just mentioned in fun references. But you'll see characters from the X-Men, or Black Panther, Nick Fury, the Hulk, Hawkeye, Black Widow, and more. But the central core of the show is always Iron Man and his close associates. There is one storyline that I thought was pretty interesting, and it follows the future character of Tony Stark's grandson, who ends up becoming Iron Man 2099. Hmm. There really is something about that year, isn't it? He ends up traveling back in time to confront Tony Stark as he thinks that his grandfather, the original Iron Man, will be the one responsible for some major catastrophe that happens in that future year. There's just so much fun to be had in this show that it is truly worth your time to go back and check out. It's a really cool take on the origins of Iron Man at a younger age and all of the other characters, good guys and villains alike. At the time of its premiere, it broke the Nicktoons channel record for having insanely high ratings and more than 125,000 viewers tuning in on day one. While it didn't end up being everyone's cup of tea, the way the characters and story around them were written were the highlight. Anytime you re-age or de-age a character for something new, there is always going to be pushback, but overlooking that fact and taking the show in for what it is, it truly has a lot to offer that I enjoyed back when it originally was on the air, and even now when revisiting it. Seeing the direction they took things and dealt with a younger Tony Stark through the eyes of now having seen 30 plus movies that created a larger universe starting all from one that focused only on Tony Stark. I think the action is really engaging and dynamic. Definitely not the best out there, but it was entertaining enough to still be a visual treat in many circumstances. But it's truly the great character work here that makes this show thrive. Whether it's our main characters or supporting characters or even the villains, the show spent a lot of time developing who they are distinctly, making their impact way more engaging and giving you a true attachment to what's happening in the show. By July of 2012, Iron Man Armored Adventures would come to an end after two seasons with a total of 52 episodes. Not a bad run by any means, but with the viewership ratings not being where the network would have wanted them to be, leading to the show coming to an end even if there were some plans for a third season, that was it for Iron Man Armored Adventures. Another thing to add on to this was that Disney had purchased Marvel after the series had started, and not long after it ended we would see other Marvel-related cartoons that feature Iron Man and all the others come to be through Disney's releasing. So most likely the show went through its pre-contracted couple seasons and Disney wasn't going to produce something to be on a Nickelodeon channel and moved forward focusing on new shows that were produced by them. For what it is, Iron Man Armored Adventures is a great series that I feel should be given a fair shot if you've never watched it or were turned away by the age of its main characters or heck, even the look of the show. 3D animation in this specific style isn't for everyone, but for me, it really works here. If you have seen the show, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.